Fashion Next began with five established Chicago designers. Melissa Serpico Kamhout, Lauren Line, Jeremiko Shoshana, Paul Sisti, and Price Walton. Three finalists were selected to move on to the next level of the competition based on the following criteria, design, inspiration, fabric selection, and overall concept. Design examined the creative approach and aesthetic. Inspiration was used as a guideline to evaluate each sketch, taking into consideration that each designer was asked to draw inspiration from the exhibition Chic Chicago. The innovative nature or boldness of their fabric selection was also taken into consideration given that the designers were asked to create a design utilizing home interior fabrics provided by Brentano. And finally, overall concept examined all elements of the designer's submissions. The three finalists for the Fashion Next competition are Melissa Serpico Kamhout, Jeremy Koshoshana, and Roger Price and Tommy Walton of Price Walton. My career in fashion began at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, which I returned to after a career in graphic design. I think that my style of clothing is somewhat elegant, but very modern at the same time. And I think there's a lot of the graphic design influence coming through on it, whether it's line quality of the clothing or line quality of the overall garment. I drape all of the pieces besides ones that are, can be done completely easily with flat patterning. I started really working heavily that way because it was more interesting to me and you can come up with so many more ideas. I enjoy working with pieces that are found, like if I find a shirt that I think is interesting and I flip it around and maybe use the um, neck hole as the armhole and that will inspire a pattern and I'll drape and sketch at the same time to come up with the final product. I came up with the idea for the garment after looking at the Comme des Garçons piece and having the fabric and realizing that the fabric was nice and light and airy and that it could be something that can be transformed and wrapped around and layered without being too heavy. The silhouette of the garment was very much dictated by the function that it would perform. The um, main volume of the dress is focused in this area because it needs the extra fabric to twist around the back and then transform into the second look. The second shape is kind of a cocoon. The skirt wraps around and there's an armhole in the garment so that the wearer can slip their arm through it so it doesn't fall off. And um, it creates this really interesting shape, but also it can protect the dress from being dragged around on the street. I definitely think of fashion as art and I think it specifically as sculpture. Um, because of the way you manipulate the fabrics and it's definitely a three-dimensional piece. My career in fashion began, I would say, when I was a little kid growing up in Tallulah, Louisiana. I remember I was about five years old and my grandmother was the mother of the church. And as the mother of the church, you had to wear these stark white uniforms. So I decided that maybe she needed some color. I took some mud and put it on her uniform. I redid the uniform by cutting it up and safety pinned and uh, hand stitched it together. And it was quite horrible. I have to say so today, but my grandmother wore it to church anyway. I've been in this uh, studio since 2005. In this design studio, what we do is we create, we um, explore, we invent, we whine, we moan, we cry, and we keep waiting for things to get better and bigger here. So when I walked into the museum and, and we were shown the pieces that we could choose from, I immediately know, knew which one I was going to choose, which was Charles James, of course. And so then it was to come back and actually sit down and do um, something on paper that was visualized in my mind. And once I did the sketches, now it's, well, will they work? Um, I, I'd like to believe that Charles James and I both will do a sketch and it's going to work because we're going to figure out how to make it work because that's what invention is all about. It's not about something that was, it's something that's going to be. And for something that's going to be, you need to figure out some angles. As you can see in the front, it's stair-stepped so that when it gets to the back, there's basically no sewing except it's tacked together. 
and what we have here is I call it volume bustier so each one of these strips will get a single wire which is a very thin wire and you can shape them and form them in any manner that that I choose to I need to know how to handle this beautiful fabric so that it maintains the integrity that I'm trying to get with my dress with this fabric I simply need to know what angle I'm going to do so it's far easier to work with this fabric than it is this one however this fabric here is absolutely incredible and I love the width of it it's like a hundred and 40,000 feet wide. There isn't anything you can't do with this fabric. There was an exhibit of Charles James dresses probably about 25 years ago. And I was upstairs looking at a dress that I think was the four leaf clover dress. And there was somebody else at the exhibit and I thought they were in my private space. So it was him. <laughs> <laughs> we have always been really inspired by historical pieces of clothing, but the difference in the way we interpret it is we use very modern fabrics, metallic fibers, heat transfer fabrics, really unusual futuristic fabrics. We try to incorporate a bit of the past uh, in our technique as well. So we like to do a lot of things by hand. We love to do things cut out in the bias to help uh, reveal the true characteristic and flow and fluidity of fabrics. But we also like to utilize experimental techniques and new things that we create on our own. We doodle a lot in our office and just um, constantly are trying to do new things and push the envelope a little bit. So cutting out on the bias, I can kind of explain what it is. The straight grain is this way. A 90 degree angle is this way, but the bias is that way. It's the 45 degree angle that way. So we lay out our patterns in that direction, and since there are stripes, we can force attention into this area. And this is very related to the idea of it being insect-like, because insects are drawn to bullseyes, and flowers and the petals are essentially a landing pad. So we're gonna make the bullseye for this bug visually right here. So that's the most interesting place to get people to look on a body. My name is Iris, and I work as a design and marketing director for Brentano. Brentano founded in 1990. My husband and I started a company. Um, before that, we worked in a garage and you know, started that way, and then finally we rented a space. So now we have 23 employees in our um, corporate office, and uh, about uh, including all the staff in the sales agent or independent reps, about 100 in the U.S. in different cities. We at Brentano has a tagline. Uh, it says, beauty and the performance. We are to design fabrics that are practical to be used in furniture, drapery. So we are very conscious about how they perform. We have quite a broad range of, of fibers that are considered as a green product. We have recycled polyester, we also have eco wool, and we also have organic cotton, uh, bamboo yarns. Ten years ago, um, we, we used to say, oh, fashion is fashion, interior des design is interior design, and you know, we go for the classic color and all that. But now I see that what's going on in fashion really affects the interior color too. I personally love fashion. Never thought I would be connected to anything. I never gone to a fashion show, you know, I just stayed with my trade. So for me, this is like a lot of fun.